Whether you want to admit it or not, we've all tripped and fallen, either over an uneven surface or maybe even our own two feet, resulting in a cut knee or a cut elbow, maybe even leaving you with an impressive scar. But scarring isn't just something that happens on the surface of our skin where we can see it. Scarring can also happen inside our bodies, in vital organs, such as the lungs, for example. Pulmonary fibrosis is a type of lung disease where the lungs become scarred and stiffened as a result of injury, such as long-term exposure to cigarette smoke. Picture these lungs as, let's say a balloon that's been left in a drawer for far too long. You take it out, you go to blow it up, but it's stiffened and difficult to inflate and can therefore no longer function properly. My name's Tara and my research focuses on the link between a high fibre diet and pulmonary fibrosis. Now, you might be wondering what the food we eat has got to do with scarring in our lungs. So bear with me here for a second. What if I told you that you were only 10% human? For every one human cell, we have 10 bacterial cells, most of which live in our gut and are known as our gut microbiota. And what we eat has a huge impact on our gut microbiota. Picture your gut at birth as an empty soil patch. What grows in that soil patch is determined by the seeds you plant. Just like what grows in your gut is determined by the foods you eat. If you plant a good seed in a good soil patch, you'll get a good crop. Just like if you eat a high fiber diet and have friendly bacteria present in your gut, you'll produce good products. And by products, I mean the products that are formed when our friendly bacteria break down the soluble fiber. These products are potentially protective. And not only that, but they can actually enter into our bloodstream and reach distal organs such as the lungs, for example. Just like a healthy crop being harvested and transported off to its final destination via a road. So what I did was I fed mice a diet that was either high in fiber or low in fiber. I then induced scarring of the lungs. Now, I didn't get the mice to smoke 20 Malvera lights a day in their cages or anything. Instead, they inhaled a small amount of a drug to induce the scarring. What we found was mice that were fed a diet high in fiber had less scarring in their lungs, as well as improved survival compared to mice fed a diet low in fiber. I'm sure you've all heard of the saying, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Well, I hope my research shows that an apple a day may actually keep the respiratory doctor away. Thank you.